<laughs> okay. Um, wow. Teamwork is definitely dream work. And I really appreciate these two people who are here uh, to be able to have a conversation with me and you today. So please welcome. Um, I feel like, you know, let's do a little applause. Drum roll uh, for the beautiful Kitty and the incredible, amazing Erin. Welcome, ladies. How are you today? Hey, Joe. Uh, well, heavy, feeling heavy. Hi, nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you, Kitty. How are you feeling? Oh, it's a roller coaster. Trying to keep keep uh, my family going and also process what I'm trying to process for my own preparation and uh, digesting of my previous sessions. So I'm going really well, honestly. I I really love my life and I'm appreciating every moment of it, but it's been a roller coaster of processing. Well, I mean, it's a very honest statement. I love that. And I love, I mean, I know I can speak for Erin as well as myself when I say we all love our lives. We have, you know, we have children we want to watch grow old. We have, you know, our own retirements that we would love to settle into. And I think I would be a fantastic grandmother. I think I would spoil them rotten and then just return them home. And I, I would love to just be able to establish my garden to be purely just everything I wished for. I have so many hopes and dreams. And I, I know every time I do these sessions and hear information that kind of threatens my hopes and dreams for my life it's really hard it's quite a conflict so um kitty you were experiencing the sound an interesting sound uh, the other day what can you tell us how that experience was and what was happening yes it was around 9 p.m. my time. Um, I was settling in for bed to sleep and I heard a, hard to describe, but it's like a low, um, a low vibrating type uh, pitched sound, like um, kind of like a jet engine, but different or also kind of like thunder, um, but it elicited an emotional response in me. Um, so I wasn't sure what it was, but immediately I, what went into my head was, oh my God, is this the laser event? And I panic set in. Um, it's hard to admit that because I've been prepping. I felt like I should be ready but uh, the first thought in my head was I'm not ready. <laughs> and so I laid there and, and uh, I kind of just went through my process of um, taking a deep breath and centering myself and bringing myself back to neutral, which, and telling myself it's okay. You know what's gonna happen. You've seen it. We showed it to you. Everything's okay. And I kind of became at peace and then I went to sleep and nothing else happened. And then when I woke up in the morning, the first thing out of my son's mouth was, mommy, what was that noise last night? And it kind of shocked me because I kind of thought maybe I imagined it or maybe it was just thunder or sometimes I hear earthquakes before they happen. So I was kind of reasoning with myself last night but then to have him say that, what was that noise? I said, what did it sound like? He said, it was like thunder, but it wasn't thunder, mommy. It was not thunder. And he was like terrified about it. And I was like, it's okay. It's, everything's fine. You know, just reassured him and 
And then uh, I, one of uh, the two of you, or both of you, I can't remember, <laughs> sent me a video of, of, um, of an unidentified flying object that was in the sky that night. And that it, uh, it all just, yeah, that's that was my experience. So it's crazy. I can't remember how many thousands of people reported it, but it was a big space, a big long stretch of America in a line. And there was, yeah, as you experienced uh, the sound. And I guess because it went so fast, not that many people got footage of it, but there is footage of it. It does look like a, it's hard to describe, like, um, it's, it's nothing I've ever seen before. Kind of looks like a meteor, but it doesn't because there's no head on it. There's no big ball, no bulbous area. It does, it looks like a very strangely shaped line going through the sky. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But I unfortunately didn't look out my window um, I kind of wish I did, but at the same time, maybe I don't want to see it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's understandable. Um, in Sally's session, they showed her it looking like a, a man-made. She They sort of didn't want to show her, but she sort of said it was like a cone. Is that what she said in the session? No, shell. So I don't quite know what that shell looks like, but I don't think we really need to know all the details of it. We know the purpose of the laser event if it happens. We also know, um, you know, we all, all of us here, unfortunately, have had sessions that have gone against our own beliefs about the shift to new earth and we are still, you know, having to process what that actually means as we, you know, still want to focus on our own personal lives. And then we do this work and we get information that is definitely not our own thoughts, definitely not our, our um, hopes. But then as we grow with this work and understand it, we have to respect the reasons why. And that's heavy. So Erin, share with us. So my contract changed three weeks ago or so. Uh, again, um, I was supposed to be asleep. I was supposed to just shift you know back when it was December it was supposed to just shift and you know be asleep and whatever anyway um told they've been prepping me with dreams for the last few weeks um that my contract has changed and everyone in my family's contract has changed um uh the reason why I started with this and I've been like searching for the highest perspective and the truth is because I'm very protective of the people that I love and um they make jokes and sessions about me having my pants on fire which is true I mean I did slash do have my pants on fire for the purpose of protecting the people I love and they're prepping me because I'm leaving before my two young children who I know are high dimensional beings themselves my husband has changed his contract. Um, he doesn't know any of this, of course. And he's um, gonna have the old earth experience. And I don't know where he's going after that. He, um, and they have been giving me very symbolic dreams and um, trying to prepare me for the nostalgia that I know I'm gonna feel. Um, and to emotionally prepare me from being separated from the very people that I have been trying to protect this whole time. Um, 
So I have been working on that. I uh, felt like I, I still have a lot of, I've been trying to process that. It's pretty heavy, as you can imagine. <laughs> I took today off of work to work on releasing it. Um, and I have a difficult time releasing because I don't cry very often. So I have a difficult time crying. So luckily I have you two to help support me with, hey, try taking a bath. Um, you know, things that I should know are like, hey, Aaron, idiot, go outside and stand uh, barefoot. Oh yeah, I forgot. Um, you know, stuff like that. Luckily I have you two to like set me straight on um, how to get out of this, but um, really trying to wrap my head around that is difficult, but um, I'm working really hard on surrendering in. I mean, it's so clear we're not in charge. It's so clear we're not in charge. And just surrendering in to like everyone's team loves them. And as much as I want to grab my young children and make sure they're under my arm the entire time, I'm not in charge of their experience either. Their team is in charge of their experience and their team loves them. And um, so I'm just having faith in in their team and um, in my own team and surrendering into um, what my subconscious and higher self deems uh, appropriate for me and whatever that looks like. And um, I don't need to know the details, not that they would give it to me anyway. I've tried for months, <laughs> they, they won't tell me, but um, you know, I'm really working into surrendering into that. So yeah, today's been a lot of trying to release the heaviness of that. It's interesting because part of me is wondering, was this always going to be the case when you did change your contract to awaken, knowing that your loving protection of others actually kind of stifles them to be able to experience the things they need to? And, um, you know, like your, your intentions is to protect everyone from experiences. Um, you know, because you know how hard some experiences are. So your intentions are pure. It's coming from a really beautiful, loving, supportive place. Um, and I feel like um, the whole purpose of Old Earth is to have those personal experiences. And it doesn't sort of surprise me that you need to be sort of like elsewhere for, say, lovingly, your husband to step up with the kids. Doesn't it remind you, Erin, of another lifetime you had where you were left with children? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't seem fun. Um, yeah. And that's, and they've been getting that message across to me too, that this is going to be a, a, a profound growth opportunity for him. Um, and yeah, I absolutely would go and thrive in the role of like protect and here's what we got to do. And here's, you know, just shield them from everything. That's my instinct. And um, it wasn't always this way. It changed a few weeks ago. And um, I, I, I remember being like, okay, subconscious, like what else you have for me? Like, I'm ready to like, tell me, you know, what else do I need to know? And then I got that dream and I was like, oh my gosh. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> That's a good one to work through. Um, Be careful what you ask for. I know. I'm like, I'm so sadistic. I'm like, Shit. but like everything is, is um, like the, yeah. Anyway, so they're preparing, but like, I know, like, I, like, I know I just have a knowing and, and my outlook has changed since my contract changed, which is interesting. And I'm wondering if other people have noticed this in the last few weeks as well. My um, like desire to shield them, um, like it's, I, I've kind of surrendered into it where I no longer, like I'm, hmm, how do I say it? Like I'm not pleading for them to have an easy road or an easy experience, I am now I'm like, it's purposeful. They need to experience old earth, it's purposeful. And I know that logically, but it's still like emotionally, it's very tough. So when my contract changed, I, I knew that my, like, my parents had, like they're going to source, I just know that. I know that my sister and my husband are gonna have each other to lean on and they've got the exact same message to, um, or the exact same lesson to learn and they can do it 
I know they can. I have been, um, I have printed out several copies of your manual, the Mastering Old Earth. I've got um, books on how to <laughs> like um, uh, do self-hypnosis so you can get in contact with your subconscious. I have now Oracle cards left behind from my husband. I've got this whole journal explaining what I've been doing this whole time and the lesson he needs to learn and that he can do it. And I love him and um, really just that. Um, and that's a lot, but uh, I did also get a message from my subconscious to make sure that you leave your house in order. I got that a few, was like the moral of the dream. And that was a few days ago. So I've been getting all that nice and ready and presentable. I mean, it's a, it's epic, the information that we get in these sessions, and, and it's all so easy to listen to them, but when you actually have to apply the information, you know, that's next level, and those emotions all need to be processed and worked through, I think many of us had to process it last year when we had the December date dooming on us. And that felt very surreal. We've had these bonus months, which have been profound in the work growth. Um, I mean, I, especially for me, um, but it's still the same emotions. Um, you know, I think, I think there is still a very healthy level of denial for myself because I know I really, I, I understand why it all has to happen, but I also can be very upset with it. And as soon as I start thinking about Gaia, I can tap into that and then feel a, like a selfish, selfish asshole for wanting to keep ignoring all the signs she is giving me about her state. And, you know, she's begging and begging and begging to have support and to be loved and to be released and, you know, it's so easy to look at my region that I live in and be like, she looks totally fine. Like, you know, this is not possible what we hear in sessions. And when I channeled her yesterday and she was saying, you're looking at, you know, so closely of one tiny aspect of me. So for those people who still think she looks beautiful and all is well, you know, you're not seeing the entire picture of this. And, um, you know, people can justify not wanting to believe this. Uh, you know, there's, there's all these justifications of why people don't want to accept this information. And you don't have to accept this information. No one's forcing you to believe it. Or, um, you know, there is an opportunity for us to release now. Because the more we release now our emotions and find our balance, the more we can be of service to others. And, you know, I look at both of you now with a very heavy heart because I know how hard it is to be having this information and still trying to balance the 3D. Yeah, I've been going through about the same thing as you uh, in some respects, Erin, as far as like how knowing that you know your family's gonna be here and you're not is is heavy and it's super hard to come to terms with. And knowing that they might not ever go to the same place as you is super hard. But um, what keeps me going? One of the things that keeps me going is thinking that. Normally, when we would have incarnation experiences, we, as a human, we all pass away all at different times, usually, and this is all okay. Every, we can still be in contact on the other side. There won't be like some wall where we'll never, ever be able to contact our family again, even if they don't go to New Earth. Is that right, Joe? Um, that's correct. I mean, we always can have some form of connection. Um, energetically with each other um, you know so we're not you know we're never apart we're always really ultimately one um, so you know those those people who have actually died you know can their consciousness can come back as orbs on the new earth you know that's how 
you know, Dolores Cannon and quite a few other people are like, you'll see me as an orb. <laughs> so they don't want to come in with their crystalline bodies because they don't have crystalline bodies anymore and that's totally okay. But the essences of them can come in. Um, and it may be a more bigger advanced version of them with the essences. Um, you know, we don't quite know for each individual how that's all going to work. We know that there's going to be animals that will come in as orbs and you simply just think about them and when you think about them you can call them in i would say now is a really good time if we're talking to any of our friends and family to just you know let them know that you believe in reincarnation and that if i you know if i died i'm still going to be with you always i may leave my physical body but my love for you is internal and I'm always going to be there for you. Think of me and I'll be right there. And if you cry, it's not because you're grieving. It's because you can feel my love. And I love you forever. That's so beautiful. You know what I'm struggling with is um, I know that the people I've been trying to protect, they do need the profound healing. I see how... Um, like selfishly, like I want to protect them and I want to heal them. And I've been pleading with my husband subconscious, like, let me take care of him. And I, he, and he might need that profound source healing. And there's a reason for it. And um, just I'm just, I'm a. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm still, I still am pleading. Like, can I please take care of him? But it might be bigger than that. And it's, that's really hard to wrap your head around. Erin, what I think you're feeling also is you uh, still got some trauma from that past lifetime where you were left with children. And this is why you don't want anyone else to feel this way. And so you have to heal from that past lifetime and learned that and if you understood um, and learned about the lessons and the experiences that you did have being a solo father of two girls then you know that would help you realize um, that it was so purposeful and not only was it purposeful it was fantastic experiences even those we deem as hard and horrible experiences are still fantastic but I think er, the errand we see today is because of that that person who who was abandoned with children who wants to protect children who wants to protect everyone and not let anyone suffer you have probably suffered so much in other lifetimes that you're just fed up with the suffering, think it's nonsense, and you refuse to let it happen to anyone. And so you become the bulldozer to protect everyone from suffering. And I love you for that. But it is not your responsibility. And you know that, my friend. You know that. You know that. And it is like when we watch our children riding their bikes for the first time, we don't ever want to let go. They're like, you're holding us back. I can do this. And you know they're going to fall over. You know it's going to hurt when they crash. You know, you can't even, you know, you hold your breath and you don't even want to open your eyes. And you just have to let them go because they are now yelling at you. You're a handbrake. <laughs> and, you know, as simple as that sort of analogy is, they are still bigger beings having these small 3D experiences, which they have signed up for, which they want. So therefore they can potentially protect others in their futures. So, and we can't see the bigger purposes of it, but what you're holding onto right now is the grief that you're feeling for the reality of you knowing so profoundly within you, even if you wanted to spend you know, some time in denial, that's totally fine but you know that you still have to process and find neutral and balance in what's coming. Yeah, yeah. And it's, um, yeah, like, kind of like you said yesterday, it's more than a hobby. I mean, it, anyone who listens to your channel at this point, I for sure think it's a calling and it's, um, you know, 
people who it's deeper than a hobby and it's 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 not even a day-to-day -day commitment it's like hour by hour trying to stay in that neutral space see things from the bigger perspective and it's hard like learning it is hard enough applying it yeah tough it's Absolutely. tough Every interaction is an opportunity to empower someone because we've all empowered ourselves at this point, right? And so, you know, every connection that we have with someone, whether it's supporting their emotions or acknowledging just their existence and how they feel towards us is always going to empower. It's going to empower our connections to them and it's going to brighten their day. We know so many sleeping beauties that are um, so disempowered and so scared. And I think if you just started becoming this like poet to your husband and telling him how much you, he means to you and, you know, like sharing your feelings with him, Erin, because you probably think if I start telling him how much I love him, I'm going to start breaking down. I mean, you had a date night with him the other night and it was like, you couldn't enjoy it because you were just overwhelmed with, the information you are still trying to process and balance. Yeah, yeah. It's I'm still struggling with it. Um, I don't I don't. I'm still struggling with it. Just point blank period. I um, <clears throat> I also understand that he himself changed his contract like higher dimensional he, <laughs> whoever his subconscious is. Like no one is making him go through this old earth experience. And I can see if he does end up on new earth, uh, like I can already feel the sense of pride that he would have about um, mastering 3D earth, which he's been trying to do. This is not his first lifetime here. It's been, you know, so he's had rough goes here is this his last chance so I could see why he would want to take on that opportunity and also I could see why he volunteered to stay back because he's the guy that um, after a big storm hits he's the one with the chainsaw going around and making sure the tree limbs are away from cars and everything and he's that person so I can see why he has stepped up and I um yes I I do need to respect it more uh working on it <laughs> working on it and so he's going to be a profound service. You love those people who are a profound service. So then, therefore, you see him rather than now not a victim, you actually see him as a 3D, you know, old earth hero. And you love those people who are stepping up and helping people. And no wonder you find, you know, no wonder you're connected to him. You can empower the crap out of him with that you know, buy him all the fuel he needs for the chain saw or whatever, whatever, whatever. Like, you know, you are going to make it so easy for him because you are going to be able to prepare him for things he doesn't even realize he needs to prepare for. So, you know, you are of profound service, my friend. You can release those feelings of responsibility, trusting everything will unfold beautifully just as it needs to. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, you know also was interesting with the timing I knew the contract changed he was activated right when the contract changed right when I was sensing it he's all of a sudden asking questions and open to bigger information so it's um yeah so I have, I have two cool. things yeah I have two things so when we raise our own vibrations uh, no one can escape it <laughs> and so you know when we are raising our vibrations it is raising our households and our communities and so you know that is part of being of service that is why we need to do our inner work to be of service and be raised uh, raising our vibrations so of course people around us naturally are going to be pushed into right having higher vibrations as well you know and we naturally can you know raise the roof <laughs> with energy um I just wanted to say one thing just uh, to see if this will be put into a different perspective. Those people who have had many, many lifetimes here and many husbands and many children, you get to the new earth, who do you pick? <laughs> Polygamy. Oh, someone trying to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> 
mystery husband from your third lifetime may be fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Right. This is finally when all this twin flame narrative comes into play, right? Didn't I hear about that one of my subscription services? Like <laughs> your twin flame journey? Oh, okay, sorry, I'm being mean again. <laughs> <laughs> From my understanding, the twin flames is someone that's going to trigger, love you, but trigger you. And, you know, uh, it's, it seems like so many labels, um, but, you know, everyone's been triggered to look at their behavior and grow um, so many people have been triggered to look at their behavior and grow. It is time to grow. So, um, Kitty, is there any more information or anything else you want to share? I, I can't really think of anything um, other than just sending love to everybody and just um, knowing that we're all trying the best we can. Yeah, I think a lot of people um, feel very pressurized to, to do the best that they can and more. And then they don't, it kind of stifles them, it limits them because they don't quite know where and what to do. And we were just talking earlier um, about what was happening last night in terms of channeling and Gaia. And, you know, after I shared that with you both, your question was, well, what can I do? How can I release her? How can I help? And, you know, it's not like we can just call her up or, you know, send her flowers. I mean, she's provided us all the flowers. Every single flower you have ever seen, ever smelled, ever dreamed of is because she's gifted that to you. And every single food you have eaten, every sunset you have experienced, and I guess she's not responsible for the sun, but, you know, all of the beaches she's provided for you, all of the mountains, all of the trees, everything that she has hosted has always been for you. And what we can do for her now is accept her life contract is changing and she wants to be in control of it. We can't helicopter her in any which way. We can deeply respect she's exhausted. We can deeply respect she needs us to keep our vibrations high, very high. She has been begging us to do this she is begging I don't need to go into details of how she is actually going because it is very grim and is not healthy it is very low vibrational that it makes me have to like the density of it is very challenging so the things that we are very grateful for her is immense and we need to be able to be sending her love and gratitude for everything. We're so easily, as humans, we love to take things for granted. And we are oblivious to the beauty and the wonder that she has provided for us every single second. And yet, when we add up how many times we've acknowledged her, when we add up the time that we have thought about her and cared about her, we all should be a little bit ashamed. And instead of feeling guilty and being stuck in that, moving forward now, what are our choices? Moving forward now, don't we want to honor this mother, this planet? Don't we want to honor her soul? Don't, want, don't we want to give her respect that she deserves? She shouldn't be begging us to get love. She should not be begging anything from us. We should be so fucking grateful and humbled to be here to be able to experience this life that we should be giving service and gratitude to her all the time with every breath in and out we should be loving her as if she is a part of us because she is part of loving yourself is about loving others and when many people have refused to love others and to be of service you're also refusing to love and be of service to Gaia 
this is a reason why you're here on this planet now is to support this planet and humanity. And everyone can be making choices to be of active service to help Gaia because she has called upon us now. She's asked for us to release her. And what we can do is send her love and make a good effort, a profound effort to keep our vibrations high and feel that love. We must continually try and tap into that pure love for her. And in return, you will feel more high vibrational. Love, love, love has always been the key and it always will be the key to everyone around you. And I'm not just speaking to Erin and I'm not just speaking to Kitty, I'm speaking to everyone. And I'm begging you now. As much as we want to ignore what is obviously very close and coming, we have to step up and we have to be honest with ourselves. Are we approaching everything with love and joy or are we making excuses and being jerks? <laughs> I'm sick of being a jerk. I don't want to be a jerk. I have been a jerk. I want to be of service. I definitely want to be of service because when I connected in with Guy yesterday, she was screaming. She was screaming. And we have to release her and we have to honor her. And I'm sorry if anyone's triggered by this. I mean, it's a very, very, very sad situation. It's very real with very real families and very real consequences and very, very real emotions. And as we work through balancing all of that and supporting each other and loving each other, not dismissing each other's feelings, but being honest, being honest with how we feel is actually helpful because then we get to know how we feel ourselves. And if you can't find people that you can be honest with and tell each other how you feel, then it's time to start talking to yourself or the plants or anything. Um, you know, there's no excuses anymore, my friends. And I love you all so much. It's epic fucking times, that's for sure. And it's so emotional. But our collectives have been called in all of the collectives have been called in to be served notice. The time is now and we all have to be of service. <sighs> so uplifting. <laughs> anyway. Well it is going to be uplifting in the end. <laughs> I mean, once she is able to release and go on her journey, I mean, I just want everyone to keep, keep remembering the description I gave in my session of, and, and many other sessions that have been given of how happy she'll be whenever she gets, gets to her new vessel. She is so happy. And I want to feel that so bad. And I, I know we can help her. I know we can do this together. I know if we love each other enough and we just put our shit aside, it doesn't matter. We can come together and we will come together and we will get her to her new vessel and with love. And there is so much joy at the end of this. And this is the, the heat of it. We're in the thick of it. But there's a light at the end of this tunnel, a bright, bright light. And we're all going to step into that light together. And with so much joy, we will be able to celebrate together. We just have to hold on now. And we have to keep going. And we can't put our head in the sand. This isn't going away. It's here, but that's okay. It's okay. We can get through this together. And I think that's my main message. I may not have the most profound things to say, but I mean, love, love and joy is just everything. And knowing that in the end, there is that. And we're going to get there. It's, and everything's going to be all right. 
we can let go. We don't have to hold on anymore. I can see the link between us and then Erin with her family. You know, she doesn't want to let go because she knows it's going to be hard. And, you know, we know that we have survived hard things before. We've had other lifetimes. You know, it's always lessons and experiences. <sighs> this one will go down. We will be getting a gold star for this one, I'm sure. Come on big old vacation too i want mm -mm. i don't want some mind-numbing mental vacation time <laughs> looking forward to that <laughs> well hopefully it will be um that with ease and naturally and it's so mind-blowing when we ask about what is life like on new earth it's so ridiculously joyful and amazing it just sounds way too good to be true and you know it's almost that bittersweet to know that we've got this really exciting thing coming but yet we're still you know working through the trenches of this so we know that being high vibrational and having joy in our hearts and approaching everything from love will help us the best way moving forward so final messages erin mm, nope keep on keeping on that's my final message kitty i love you guys so much and i'm so profoundly blessed to have found both of you and everybody listening and just want to send so much love to everybody and just want you to know that I'm going to help in every way I can and I know all of you will too because you're being called to and you're going to heed that call now and I'm so proud I'm so so proud we're going to get through this together teamwork is dream work and i love it i love you both so much and i love all of you uh, who are still listening and may you find comfort and great joy look at some flowers and recall the times that you've had flowers and the beautiful fruits and all the blessings that you've had on in these lives they're so pro profound have fond memories and see how how well that works out for you <laughs>